Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another Powerful Point to Ponder. Why? Because we have covenanted to spend meaningful moments with the Master, and the best way to do that is by letting God speak to us in His Word. We've been in a series all week about fear. No K-N-O-W, fear. And we looked at six of the major fears that plague the human experience. And that is a fear of the future, a fear of commitment, a fear of uh, failure, a fear of loneliness, a fear of death, and now the final fear, a fear of God. Afraid of God. Our image of God causes many of us to be afraid. Proverbs 9 and 10 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He's not talking about fear in the sense of, of uh, trepidation and anxiety about God. Don't think of, of uh, Dorothy, the scarecrow, the tin man, uh, the lion, and little Toto afraid to approach the wizard, the, the all and powerful wizard. In fact, you know that the wizard was really a wimp. Uh, um, 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 old man from Kansas, he was not really the great and all-powerful wizard. Don't think of God when it says the fear of the Lord in that way. That word fear means respect and reverence. And you can only learn from something that you have fear and reverence for. And when you have fear and reverence for God, the end result, the consequence is you begin to experience wisdom. When Jesus was resurrected from the grave, we are told in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 8, very interesting, that Matthew 28 and verse 8 says, so the women hurried away from the tomb afraid. Afraid, they were afraid, yet filled with joy. So what were they filled with? They were filled with fear, and they were also filled with joy at the same time. They seem like two contradictory emotions, but they're not. They were filled with fear in the sense that they were respecting and in awe of what God had done. And God wants to, to have that type of fear, reverence and respect and awe for the fact that God had raised Jesus from the, from the dead. But they also were filled with with joy, and they ran and told the disciples their joy that Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. So as a believer, those are the two emotions we should have in relationship to God. Reverence and respect for God. Don't treat God in a flippant, trivial type of way. Don't make God, as we do in our culture, the butt of your jokes because God is to be respected. Reverence for God but also a sense of joy uh, because of your relationship with God. When you are in a very strict uh, legalistic church or a strict legalistic religion, you, you're often taught or conditioned to serve God because you are afraid of what God is going to do to you if you don't. And so many of us think that somehow we are experiencing hardship and a lot of suffering today because we made God angry. We have this image of an angry, mean God. That is not the God of Jesus Christ who loves us and cares about us and is so concerned about us that God takes the time to count the very hairs that are on our head, not only on the top of our head, but for men who wore beards, God was meticulously counting their hairs. I don't know any man who is that narcissistic that they're counting their hairs on their head, but God, you mean so much to God that God counts the hairs on your head. What should motivate us to serve God is not fear, but gratitude. Romans chapter 2 and verse 4 says this, do you show contempt for the, the riches of his kindness? forbearance, patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent. I don't repent because I'm afraid of what God is going to do for me, to me. You should repent because when you think about how kind, forbearing, and patient God has been, it ought to lead you to say, you know what, as good as God has been to me, why, am, why, am, why did I stop singing in the choir? 
As good as God has been to me, why did I stop working with the children's ministry? As good as God has been to me, why did I stop ushering and being a greeter in the church? As good as God has been to me, uh, why am I behaving and acting like this? As good as God has been to me, God, I'm going to serve you, not because I'm afraid of you, but because I am so thankful. It's your kindness. The kindness of God is what motivates us to do everything we do for God. Don't catch this idea of an angry God. When Jesus talked about God, one of the metaphors he used, and it's just a metaphor, it doesn't mean that God is male, but God, he calls God Father and taught us to, to think of God as a loving Father. Now that might not connect with many of us because many of us have some bad relationships with our dads. And in fact, sometimes psychologically, we impose the bad relationship we have on our, with our dad on God and think that God is like our dad. So we don't like to use the word father. Someone said that there are four kinds of dads. There are red light dads. Red light dads are dads who always say no and don't, don't, uh, don't, don't uh, inspire us to push forward towards our dreams and aspirations. They're red light dads. They always got the red light on. And then there's green light dance, and green light dance are just, they just let us do anything we want to do and don't discipline us and don't give us any wisdom about how bad decisions bring about terrible consequences. Those are green light dads. And then you have black light dads, and black light dads are dads that were just not there for us. And then we have yellow light dads, and yellow light dads are dads that are saying, look, there are challenges out there. You got to be cautious because everybody who smiles in your face is not really your friend. So you got to be cautious, put on your yellow light, but go on anyhow. Because when you're, you see a yellow light, that don't mean stop, it means go on, but go on with caution. And, and that's the kind of God we serve. And so you may have a bad experience with your dad because you have a black light dad who was not there, or a green light dad who just didn't put any boundaries and constraints on you, or a red light dad who always stopped what you were trying to do. But God is a yellow light God who says, go ahead, I'm with you. Let's just, amen, be cautious. God is a loving father, kind. God is not an angry tyrant. God's not some angry tyrant who's trying to get you. That's not the God of the Bible. God is not some cosmic cop who has a clipboard in his hand uh, marking all the mistakes and sins you have committed throwing them up in your face. God is not a universal killjoy who doesn't um, want you to have any fun or any joy. You know, doesn't want you to go uh, to the movies or to a concert or to see Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, that's not God. God's not a killjoy God. Jesus was a party in Jesus. First miracle he performed was at a wedding feast. God is not an impersonal force. You know, back during Star Wars, they say, may the force be with you. You can't have a relationship with gravity or you can't have a relationship with electricity because those are impersonal forces. God is a loving father who cares about you, who has your best interest at heart and has always been there for you, even when you don't realize it. The best illustration we have of God is when Jesus told the story of a son who went away, broke his father's heart, ended up in a hall pen, but realized he had made a mistake. And, and he said, I'm going back home. I hope, and, and I'm gonna work as one of my father's hired servants so I can pay him back the money that I wasted. The word prodigal means wasting. But before the son could get all the way back home, his father saw him on the, from the porch. He was on the porch. Saw him and ran and kissed him and kissed him and restored him, even though he had messed up and embarrassed his father's name. And that's who God is. Now, be afraid of some of your friends. They can be hypocrites. Be afraid of some enemies because enemies can come out to hurt you. But never be afraid of God. Respect God, but have joy because God loves you. And there will never be anything, listen carefully, there will never be any sin you ever commit that will make God stop loving you because there was nothing you ever did to make God start loving you.
God loves you with an agape, unconditional love, and it will never change. In trouble, don't turn from God. Be like the prodigal. Turn to God and experience his amazing grace. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, and thank you for this week of knowing fear. May we internalize your word in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Well, this is Saturday. Tomorrow is the Lord's Day, and uh, we continue our series uh, on the life of David, and I hope you'll be with us tomorrow. The pre-worship experience on the pre-worship show starts at 9 o'clock, and then at 9.30, we begin worship. I hope you'll be with us tomorrow and help get the word out. Amen. And if you don't have a church home, you need a church home, uh, feel free to contact us here and become a part of the online St. Stephen's community. Contact us at info, info at ssclive.org. God bless you real good. And as we close, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. See you tomorrow in church.